Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how we can use comparisons and if statements in PHP. So a lot of times when we use if statements, one of the things we can do is we can actually compare different information. So for example, if I had two pieces of information in my program, I could compare those pieces of information and depending on the result of that comparison, I could do different things. And one of the coolest things about if statements is that it allows us to compare and you know sort of like work with all the different pieces of information in our programs. So down here in my PHP tags, I'm actually going to create a function. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a function which I can pass two numbers and it'll tell me the maximum of those two numbers. So there's actually a function like this already in PHP, it's called the max function. So I could say echo max and then over here I could pass it like a three and a six. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell me which number is bigger. So when I refresh my browser over here, it gives me a six, right? So no matter what numbers I pass in here, this function will always be able to tell me which one is bigger. And I wanna show you guys how we could actually make a function just like this um, on our own in PHP. So instead of using this, I could actually write my own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function. So I'm just gonna say function and I'm just gonna call this get max. So I'm not gonna use the name max just because that other function's already using it. So I don't wanna like confuse myself. Um, so I'm just gonna say function get max and then over here I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. So that max function that we looked at before took two parameters, so two numbers. So I'm just gonna say num1 and num2. So we're gonna take in two parameters. What we wanna do is we want to figure out which of these numbers is bigger. So I wanna figure out if num1 is bigger or if num2 is bigger. Then I wanna return that back to the caller. So I wanna actually return that piece of information back. So here's the question, how can we figure out which of these two numbers is bigger? In other words, how can we figure out which one we should return back to the caller? Well, we could actually use an if statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up an if statement. I'm just gonna say if, I'm making open and close parentheses, open and close curly bracket. And inside of this parentheses, we need to specify a condition. Now, if you've been following along with the course, you'll know that in the last tutorial, I gave like a full overview of uh, if statements and we were using Boolean variables inside of these parentheses. And so essentially what we need to put inside of here is a true or a false value. We need to put a condition. But one of the things I can do with these if statements is I can actually compare different values. So I could say like if num1 is greater than num2. And you might not think that this is a true or false value, but it actually is. I'm comparing these two values together and num1 is either greater than num2 or it's not, right? It's either true or it's false. Like this comparison num1 greater than num2 is either true or it's false. Num1's either bigger or it's not. And so this actually gets resolved down to a true or a false value. And therefore we can put it inside of these parentheses and use it as a condition. So I can say if num1 is greater than num2, then down here I can do something. So I'm actually just gonna return num1. And remember, whenever I use this return keyword, it breaks me out of the function. So whenever I use this return keyword, then we're basically done with the function. We kind of leave the function, we go back to um, wherever the function was called from. And so I'm basically just gonna return num1 back and that'll be the end of this function. Otherwise though, I'm gonna say else. So if this condition isn't true, in other words, if num1 isn't greater than num2, then I'm just gonna return num2. So believe it or not, this is actually all the code that we need for this get max function, right? We're getting these two numbers. I'm saying if num1 is greater than num2, then I'll return num1, right? Because if this condition's true, I know for a fact num1's the biggest. Otherwise though, we're gonna return num2. All right, so down here below this function, I'm just gonna call it, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and echo out the answer. Um, so I'm just gonna say get max, and I'm gonna pass in two numbers. So let's pass in a three and a 90. So this one's pretty obvious. We should get 90 back, assuming we wrote that if statement correctly. 
and I'm gonna refresh the page and actually it looks like I forgot to put a semicolon over here. That's my bad. Um, all right, so now when I refresh the page, we shouldn't get an error and you'll see we're getting 90. So it looks like this function worked. Now I'm gonna say, let's try num1 as the biggest. So let's say the first number we pass in is gonna be the biggest. We'll see if we can handle it and we can. So we get 300. So looks like our get max function is working and that's all thanks to this comparison, right? I compared these two different numbers and I was able to return the correct answer. But let's say now that instead of just passing in two numbers, we wanted to make this function a little bit more complex. So let's say we wanted to be able to figure out the maximum of three numbers. So in addition to passing in num1 and num2, I also wanted to pass in a num3. Well, this actually makes our function a little bit more complex, but nevertheless, we should still be able to figure it out. So why don't we start over and we'll start fresh with a new if statement. So I'm gonna create a new if statement and now we need to figure out what types of comparisons we need to make in order to figure out which of these numbers is the biggest. Well, what we can do is we can basically check to see if num1 is the biggest first. So I could check to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num2 and, so I'm gonna use this and operator, num1 is greater than or equal to num3. So unlike before when I was just checking to see if it was greater than, now I'm checking to see if it's greater than or equal to. And honestly, we could use either of them here, but I'm gonna use greater than or equal to. So if this is true, in other words, if this whole condition up here is true, that means that num1 is the biggest. So I can just return num1 just like that. So basically I'm checking to see if num1 is greater than or equal to num2, and if it's greater than or equal to num three. But let's say that this isn't true, right? So let's say that num one isn't the biggest. Well, I can actually come down here and I can say else if. So I basically want to check another condition. So if num one's not the biggest, let's check to see if num two is the biggest. So I can just say num two greater than or equal to num one and num two greater than or equal to num three. And basically if this condition is true, that means that num2 is the biggest, right? Because it's bigger than num1 and it's bigger than num2 or greater than or equal to. And over here, I can just return num2 because that means num2 is the biggest. Then finally, we can just make an else and I can say else, let's return num3. And this one's a lot easier because if num1's not the biggest and num2's not the biggest, then we're only left with one option, which is num3 being the biggest. So by process of elimination, we figured out that num3 is the biggest. All right, so now we have our updated get max function. Let's come down here and we'll test it out. So 390 and let's make one more in here. Why don't we do like 400? So now this should give us back a 400, hopefully. So over here, I'm gonna refresh the page and you'll see we're getting back 400. So even with three inputs, our function was still able to run. Why don't we try to make this one the biggest, the middle one, so we should get 900. And let's make the first one the biggest now, and we'll get 3,000. Cool, and then we could check to see if it's still gonna work if two of them are equal. So we'll make this one 3,000 as well, and we're still getting 3,000. So. Looks like our function is working. We tested out all the different possibilities and um, we were able to be successful. So down here, you'll notice that I used these comparison operators and that's what they're called. They're called comparison operators. So things like greater than or equal to, um, right. So we have greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and then we have less than or equal to. And in addition to those, we also have a double equals, which is gonna mean they're equal. So this is basically saying if num1 is equal to num2, that's gonna be a double equals. We can also use an exclamation point equals, which is gonna check not equals. So this is gonna, this whole thing over here is gonna be true if num1 is not equal to num2. So those are all the different comparison operators that we have. And in addition to doing this with like numbers, we could also check to see if like two strings are equal. So I could like check to see if one string is equal to another string. Um, you can use basically all the data types inside of these comparisons. But hopefully that gives you a sort of an idea of how we can use comparisons inside of our programs. Honestly, you're gonna be using comparisons all the time with if statements. So you wanna make sure that you have a firm grasp on how to use them.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.